Okay, welcome back. You're watching Market Analytics, and we've been talking about algorithm trading, and that's a subject which really hasn't been discussed much when we talk about the Indian space. Dr. Guy Nelson, who's the chief strategist at Program at uh, Progress Software, is now joining us in our early studios. Dr. Guy, when you talk about algorithm trading. In India, it really hasn't picked up as much as we've seen in other markets. What's the basic understanding when you look at the Indian markets and when you talk about algorithm trading? How do you see that in the domestic space? Okay, well, perhaps it's, it's wise to say what algorithmic trading is. Um, and it is a computer automatically selling and buying stocks or equity derivatives or foreign exchange or other types of electronically traded instrument. And what we've seen globally is that over the last, say, five years, um, it, it has become, in developed markets, um, the predominant source of, of, of flow, so the predominant uh, way of trading. So in the US, for example, most people say about 70% of, of US equities are traded algorithmically. Um, and we've seen algorithmic trading as well in, um, in Asia. Um, really pick up over the last few years and in um, other emerging economies such as uh, Brazil become very strong as well. Now in India, um, it's starting from a fairly low base. Um, I would say maybe between 5 and 10 percent of equities are traded algorithmically. It's certainly more for um, derivatives, equity derivatives in India. Um, but still most companies don't use it. But that is beginning to change. And um, we are seeing, um, as, a, as a player in this market, more, um, more activity, more interest. And I think as well it's going to be inevitable because for um, Indian uh, domestic but also international organizations operating in India, it's going to be absolutely critical for them to maintain competitiveness. So why do you think right now uh, the acceptance level for this kind of training in India lags so far behind even the rest of Asia and what needs to change here? Is it a uh, regulatory push that mm. you think is needed or is it on the level of brokers and institutions mm. that this needs to be pushed? Well, I think that um, you know, India is, is obviously an emerging economy. Um, I think in terms of its stock market structure, one can actually say that it's relatively sophisticated. It's, it's had multiple markets for a long time. Um, that's not the case in Western Europe, for example, where multiple markets um, for equities only came in fairly recently. Um, but in other respects, in terms of technology, it has lagged behind. And things like co-location, where exchanges will offer brokers and other trading firms um, actually space within their premises to put computers so they can trade faster on exchange that only came into place on the the uh, the NSE and the BSE relatively recently but that has happened now but also I think in India we I would characterize the regulator as being pretty conservative um, and uh, there has the regulator has had to push to get the BSE and the NSE to perhaps cooperate between themselves more effectively and to allow the kind of trading which is commonplace elsewhere. So something called smart order routing, for example, um, was not allowed between the, the, the exchanges, did not allow it, or at least the, the NSE didn't allow it um, until very recently. And in fact, the regulator had to push um, to allow that to occur. Now, smart order routing means that um, you can find best prices and, and the most liquidity um, on either exchange. So perhaps you're trying to buy you know, a nifty 30 uh, or 50 stock and um, perhaps you don't particularly care whether you go to the NSE or the BSE. Now smart order routing allows you to find the best prices mm -hmm. um, on, on, uh, on those exchanges um, by just putting a single order in. So um, that drives competitiveness and it drives um, price discrepancies out of the market. And I think what we've seen over the last year since we really entered the market strongly is that spreads have decreased, have narrowed, um, you know, things like um, manual arbitrage mm -hmm. um, has actually disappeared from the market now. That's and that means that it's become more efficient and that's you know, a good thing. Yeah, but the other, other part, when you talk about the Indian space, we've seen algo trading 
being widely accepted as far as most of the developed markets are concerned. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the domestic space, one concern which actually emerges here when we talk in regard of algo trading, which is there, is that the volumes. Because there isn't volumes which are there enough for you to actually go ahead and look at algo trading being more of a success. So how do you look at that uh, evolving over the next couple of years? And also, are there any ways to tackle the, uh, the concerns that volumes actually, uh, you know, the, the reasons that actually which volumes face? Because the lack of volumes may actually lead to somewhat of a wrong model or the model may not work because of those volumes not being there. Mm. So how do you counter that? Well, this volume thing is an interesting one because when one looks at the, you know, the dollar volume when compared to other markets uh, in internationally, uh -huh. um, it's, it's relatively low in India. But when one looks at the number of trades which are actually executed on, for example, the, the NSE in equities, uh, which has about 75% market share, um, it's actually, I think, the third largest in the world. So there's a lot of trading going on of relatively small uh, trade sizes. Um, so that means that um, actually the, the Indian market is ripe for the use of algorithmic trading. If you think about it, there's an awful lot of information flowing around. And what algorithmic trading allows a trader to do is to, to give them, in a way, a bionic arm, you know, a computer-aided help to make sense of all that information and to be able to trade more effectively. So the fact that there's an awful lot of trades um, and an awful lot on, um, on derivatives markets as well means that um, India will benefit greatly from algorithmic trading. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that space, when we talk about the domestic space itself, what kind of presence do you actually have in, the, in India as of right now? And what kind of strategy are you actually looking to implement? I mean, you know, when you talk about algo trading, it's predominantly being used more from, a, from, from some of the foreign brokers that are actually operational mm -hmm. in India. So, in that context, what kind of clientele do you actually enjoy? And what kind of an outlook do you see in algo trading when you talk about your clientele right now mm -hmm. in India? Well, we've got about 150 clients who use our, uh, our platform, a Palmer Worldwide. Um, and um, we've been in now in the Indian market for about a year, um, promoting a Palmer, um, acquiring clients. We've got about five of those now, um, and uh, we see that you know fairly rapidly taking off as well. And uh, those clients at the moment are international organisations, um, and I think the explanation for that is that um, you know in any market. Uh, where, where one market is perhaps catching up with others, then those firms present in those, those multiple markets will transfer knowledge, um, IT, etc., into the developing markets. So I think it's inevitable that the international organizations are there first. But uh, what we're seeing is now, um, because that's happening and because thus you know, the, the competition is hotting up, the domestic firms are having to get on board. They're going to have to adopt this. Um, because otherwise, um, they're going to get left behind. Mm. All right, Charles, thanks so much for having dropped by and for all that information. Let's take a break here, come back uh, with more on the other side in two minutes.